Hi, in this video, we're going to quickly explore using a capacitor in CircuitLab. So I'm going to start by dragging a capacitor onto my circuit from the passive element section of the toolbox. Editing the parameters is easy. Just double click the component and you can change the name, capacitance, or even the display type. I'm going to just change the capacitance. Note that changing the display type does not change how the component behaves in simulation. It just changes how the part looks on your schematic. So let's quickly see how this component behaves in simulation. For that, I'm going to add a sinusoidal current source here so we can see the voltage and current characteristics. Then I quickly wire up my circuit by dragging wires from the ends of my components. To see this component in action, I hit the simulate tab and then choose my stop time and my time steps. You need to choose these carefully based on the frequency of the input sine wave you have. In order to tell CircuitLab what to plot, I have to add expressions to my outputs. The easiest way to do that is to hover over a node in your schematic and click. Here, since I clicked on one of the terminals of my capacitor, it adds both the voltage at the terminal and the current going into that terminal. Then I run the time domain simulation and see both the current and voltage over time. Now let's do something to explore how this voltage and current relationship changes if I change the capacitance. To do that, I'm going to use the sweep parameter feature in the simulate tab. I choose C1.C, that's the capacitance of my capacitor, and I'm going to do a custom sweep and do 1 micro and 10 microfarads. All that means is that CircuitLab is going to do the whole simulation for 1 microfarad and then do it again for 10 microfarads and then show me both traces at the same time so we can compare. Let's hit run and see what we get. We see that the current traces here are basically on top of each other. That makes sense because it's the current source driving this. It's not dependent at all on the capacitance of my capacitor. The voltage, however, is different. This makes sense if we think about the equation of a capacitor, Q equals CV. Since the current is the same, they have the same charge Q built up. But since C is 10 times as much, we can see the voltage is in fact one tenth as big. Another thing you can notice is how the current and voltage traces are offset by each other by 90 degrees. An interesting exercise to do by hand is to derive why this is true on a piece of paper. Hint, it again has to do with the equation of a capacitor. If you have any requests for topics you would like us to cover in these videos, please let us know in the comments section, and thanks for watching.